Vice Mayor. Good morning. Morning, Jim. We have uh, messages to send up if you could throw tips on. I would like to open it and thank Commander Anatoly Soloviev uh, and Board Engineer Pavel Vinogradov for inviting us, us into their home for the last several days. They have been very gracious. They are a tremendous team. They work well together. They have taught us a lot, and we thank them for being so gracious. It requires an awful lot of teamwork to pull one of these missions together. Uh, to start with, of course, the rendezvous is not just the pilots or the crews, but all the folks on the ground. Uh, and, the, and the tracking stations all around the world to get the precise navigation required. Uh, by the way, I feel very confident that had the mirror lost uh, attitude control, we still would have been able to dock with uh, the teamwork that we have and that we've uh, developed over the last several years. Uh, the teamwork started, of course, with our two crews once we got aboard, and we proceeded to transfer about 7,000 pounds worth of water experiments uh, back and forth, up and down, and our uh, most important transfer, of course, with the two crew members, uh, bringing Dr. David Wolf up, and we'll return uh, C. Michael Fole, Ph.D., uh, after his successful stay up on Mir uh, as soon as we leave. Uh, and by the way, I will not use uh, Dr. Wolf's statement, but I love what he says when he closes each of his transmissions to the ground every night with this little statement about risk, and I'll let him say that a little bit later. Uh, but the teamwork that we have developed over the past several years in the Phase 1 program has enabled us to pull one of these kinds of missions together where we transfer so, many, so much equipment up and down. But it's not just these flights that requires an awful lot of teamwork. It's uh, both space programs that have been working together as a team and learning from each other. The different programs have different requirements. They have different uh, considerations. They use different techniques when they're performing spacewalks, when they're, when they're doing various things, flying around the vehicle. Uh, and we have different requirements. But yet it works together. Uh, our vehicle has the capability of bringing equipment and experiments down. The Mir is the only game in town in the space station business, and they, they have been very successful over the past several years in performing experiments. And now we have the ability to bring some of those results back down to the Earth. And so it's a good team effort. Uh, this station is a beautiful station. I would like to also compliment the Russians on their resourcefulness, their ingenuity in designing the station and building it, fabricating it, launching it, and extending it past its lifetime. They have uh, done many experiments on board. We will now continue that with the Phase 1 program. And again, it is the only game in town. With the teamwork that we've developed in the last several years, we will continue that and bring it into the future and build the International Space Station. We have learned well together. We've learned to operate all of the coordination uh, that we will use for the next several days as we, as we perform the fly around. Uh, will really help as we build the International Space Station. I would also like to compliment the Russians on their ingenuity. We still don't know where the leak is in the Spectre module, but shortly before our flight, they sent over a lot of hardware that we brought up uh, to help to identify the leak, and so hopefully we'll be able to help in that uh, area tomorrow when, when we do the fly-around. Uh, but if we don't, uh, they'll perform several spacewalks over the next several months, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, solve the problem and get the station back to its full capabilities. But if they don't, it's still a beautiful station. And David is uh, conducting experiments. There are experiments going around in various parts of the station. 
He is uh, making some great observations. He's very excited about it, and he makes sure that he sh uh, shares them with, with all of us as we're getting the transfer operations done. So it's been an exciting six days, and we really thank the Russians for inviting us up here. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that and say it's been a great mission for us. We hope to be back on the planet here in a couple days, and we'll see David Wolf certainly when he comes back after four months, and uh, hopefully he'll make some amazing findings and, and collect some more data, uh, which eventually put together with the teamwork of the private investigators down on the ground, the principal investigators on the ground, uh, I think they have a good chance of making some amazing discoveries. So it's been a great mission for us, and we hope we look forward to seeing you here in a couple of days. Michelle Coyden with the Associated Press for Dr. Wolf. Now that you've been on Mir for a few days, is there anything you wish you had to make your stay more comfortable or something you may have forgotten in the, um, to pack in the mad rush to get there? I would have brought two Wendy Lawrences. <laughs> no. <laughs> really, one did a, an awfully good job. Uh, you should see that laboratory. It's very organized now. Uh, honestly, I would have brought some more short pants with the Velcro and the Velcro pockets. They're really useful. Uh, Mark Caro from the Houston Chronicle for uh, Mike Fole. Uh, in a brief and even, if necessary, subjective sense, could you sort of describe what you think your contribution was to the partnership? Wow, well, well um, I'm just glad for my own sake that uh, I had a good time here. Uh, basically enjoyed myself, I learned new things, my mind was opened about a lot of things, um, and most important, uh, I gained uh, four very new, but very close friends who uh, speak a totally different language from the one special experience that I could really describe is to have learned a new language in the last two years and to have learned to communicate and be close to four people in such a way. It's something I had never expected as a physicist studying only science subjects in college. In terms of the experience in space, um, my contribu contribution was really one of just being a member of a crew. And uh, when we have people on board space vehicles, they are a crew, uh, in spite of their accents, maybe in my case, or nationalities. And in that case, I think we should always think of the crew as a whole working together and each person is contributing in their own way and the best they can to their abilities. I can number a number of little things that I did that I think were special, but I don't think they're very important in the big picture of the crew working together as a whole. P. Call Terry with the West Kentucky News. Uh, Colonel Titoff, uh, you've had a most distinguished career, some might even say legendary. What are your plans after this flight? Do you hope to fly again, either on shuttle or uh, with the Russian Space Agency? Вопрос uh, Титову. Uh, все знают вас как легендарную личность. Каковы ваши планы после возвращения? Планируете ли вы uh, дальнейшие полеты? Good question. <laughs> К сожалению, я пока еще не знаю. To say that I don't know for sure, and I think nobody does know, know what I will be doing in the future. But I think when I return to Earth, there will be some results after this flight. There will be some plans, some implementation. But of course, I wouldn't want to abandon uh, my work currently because I feel I have uh, quite a good experience, and this experience should be shared. When I come back, I'll think about it. Муниципальное телевидение подлипки города Королёв, столицы российской телевизионной космонавтики. From Королёв. Мой вопрос э российской части многочисленного экипажа. Анатолий Соловьёв, Владимир Виноградов и Владимир Георгиевич Титов. For Mr. Titov, Конечно, вся Mr. Соловьёв and Mr. Виноградов. 4 октября 1957 года. Of course everybody remembers what October 4th of 1950 means. You were small. You were between ages 1 to 10. But nevertheless, do you evaluate how do you evaluate this jump in the history of mankind? And do you anticipate such huge jumps, quality jumps in the future? 
Спасибо за хороший вопрос. Thank you for a good question. У нас есть очень We have wonderful chance presented by the two crews which is present at the Mir Atlantis complex to congratulate all the citizens of Karalov with the upcoming holiday. This is a great holiday which in 1957 probably shook the whole world. This is a fantastic event which happened on October 4th. The first Sputnik was launched and many people which took part in this event still live in Karalov. With great pleasure we congratulate the veterans and all the people who work in this area and all the citizens of Karalov. And of course I would like to wish them the best happiness, health, success in each family. I would like to add to these congratulations and I would like to say that it would be difficult to expect in the nearest future such a jump. If this was a special event, maybe only if we step on Mars on any other planet. Uh, I think what was achieved 40 years ago was an exclusive achievement. Uh, nothing can compare to the launch of a human into space. First of all, um, I, you were fading in and out. I would like for you to repeat your question, but I would also like beforehand to add my words to the congratulations of Anatoly and Pavel in regards to the holiday. Of course, Karalov is connected to the names of many of our colleagues and to the names of people we don't know by name. But I would like to congratulate all of my wonderful colleagues with this wonderful holiday. But would you please repeat the questions? First question. Pierre. The functionality of the spacesuits during EVA, our Arlan and the American spacesuit, the benefits, the negatives, and the positives. And the second, to the commanders, brief results of the joint mission. As far as the Arlan suit and the American EVA suit, they are very similar functionally, and that is natural because they are for the same objectives. The, these suits assure 100% functionality for the work we have to perform, and that was proven during EVA. There are positives and negatives for both suits. The only thing I would like to say, the positive qualities of both suits, if they would be combined and one universal suit will be designed for the future space station, that would be wonderful. And I think many people would say the same. The question was... That is that they are complementary. Uh, it's incredible to me that uh, the Russians went one way, we went a different way, uh, and yet it, it's almost as if the two different designs were built that way intentionally, which they weren't. The Russians have a long history of space achievements. Uh, they have been on this space station for 11 years now, permanently inhabited. Uh, the Americans, on the other hand, have the capability to transport a lot of uh, equipment up and down in the space shuttle, and so that complements uh, the Russian program. The Russians are very resourceful. Uh, the American technology is, is pretty superb. I mean, our flying vehicle uh, really flies very precisely. It's relatively easy uh, to fly up and rendezvous with a space station and dock because the system is so precise. It is really that good, and it's a very nice flying machine when you come down and land. There are some uh, problems that you 
need to make sure you stay away from. You don't want to land in, in bad weather, etc. But overall, the program is very technically competent. Both of them are very good programs. I think the safety records are very good. Uh, and I think that we're actually building on each other's programs, and I think together we're much better than if we do it separately. And that's the way uh, certainly our nation has, has built itself on, on diversity. And uh, I think together we can achieve greatness and someday go back to the moon and on to Mars. If, if to summarize the results of this mission, or to say about the benefits of this mission, I wouldn't want to talk about how many tons of cargo has been delivered by the shuttle to the Mir. I wouldn't even uh, talk about how much the pressure was raised inside the station. What I wanted to talk about is that the Atlantis is docked to Mir, and the most important thing is the two crews, American and Russian, are working together. And the most important thing is the desire to work together exists and is implemented. These missions very well demonstrated. For example, yesterday, we were observing yesterday two cosmonauts and astronauts working in the open space in order for the station to continue operating. For a few days, we worked in Michael Fo with Michael Fole also in spacesuits in the open space. And I think this is a wonderful, this is work which bears practical fruit. The station functions. Science results are achieved, and every day, month, year of the extension of the station operation brings practical results. Uh, in our opinion, we begin to understand how the future will have to work, how will we function in space in the future, what would be the positives and the negatives. I think that's the most important result of this mission, and the most important is that two crews are here on orbit. Question for Anatoly Solovyov. Could you please tell us how do you uh, evaluate the new onboard computer system operation? I can only say the word which we heard from the MCC. They just said, good job, guys. Thank you. And I would like to distribute the satisfaction expressed by the MCC to all my friends who are working here. We installed the computer, and it's working perfectly. just want to say, be careful down there on Earth. It's awful close to the ground and somebody could get hurt. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Very well. Patty and I are both standing by here. Today is my last day. Oh, peace. Well, make sure you don't forget anything. Pack all those souvenirs. <laughs> Most of them.